to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Amen. Though the giants may be on our way to Inda, God will surely give us victory. We are able, we are able to go up and take the country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on our way to Inda, God will surely give us victory. We are able, we are able to go up and take the country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on our way to Inda, God will surely give us victory. Victory only move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side, move on to the righteous side of God. Hallelujah, let us move on to the righteous side, move on to the righteous side, move on to the righteous side of God. We are able, we are able to go up and take the corn tree to possess the land from Jordan to the sea though the giants may be on our way to Inda God will surely give us victory victory let us move on to the righteous side, move on to the righteous side, move on to the righteous side of God. Hallelujah, let us move on to the righteous side, move on to the righteous side, move on to the righteous side of God. Shout hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for the opportunity we have to be assembled together again. This is the third night of this prayer. I believe God for you. The power that rolled away the stone at the tomb of Jesus on the third day, that power will roll away every barrier on your path to greatness in the name of Jesus. I speak with the anointing of God upon my life. Whatever that have constituted itself as a barrier in your life, the resurrection power in the name of Jesus, we move them out of your way. I come with the prophetic grace of the Almighty and I declare as you say amen with me that every roadblock to your progress, every roadblock to your advancement, every roadblock on the way to you getting to your place of glory, the Holy Ghost fire will crush and burn and consume them in the name of Jesus. I don't care the authorities that have been standing on your way. There is a higher authority. I don't care the power that have been standing on your way. There is a greater power. The power in the name of Jesus. At the mention of the name of Jesus, the Bible says, Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. As you say amen to these prophetic declarations that God is giving to me through you, I mean to you through me right now, you will see God at work in your life. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. This season is your season of lifting. It's your season to rise. It's your season to shine. It's your season to move forward. It's your season to move, to make progress. It's your season to achieve. Even though there is pandemic, even though there is confusion, even though things are difficult, but I want to tell you, the light shines brighter even when there is darkness. I prophesy over your life in the name of the Lord Jesus that you are going forward. Spiritually, you are going forward. Maritally, you are going forward. Financially, you are going forward. In every area of your life, you are going forward. In your business, you are going forward. In your ministry, you are going forward. In your career, you are going forward. It does not matter what the stories have been. It does not even matter what the story is. I have come to announce to you that God is turning your story to glory. 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 By the power in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever will not allow the purpose of God to be fulfilled in your life, I command them to be consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will make ways for you where there are none. That the Lord will lift you by his supernatural power. For when he says yes, no one can say no. He commands and he stands. He has the final word. He has the final say over your life. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Close your eyes and let us pray. Tonight is going to be awesome. Tonight is going to be powerful because the Lord is going to give you power to push through. I want you to pray this prayer for yourself. Say, I receive power to push through. I receive power to push through. Open your mouth and make that declaration. I receive power to push through. I receive power to move forward. I receive power to advance. I receive power to make progress. I receive power to get to the place of my glory. I receive power to push through in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare, receive power for he that asketh receive it. Ask for power. Ask for power. The supernatural power of the Almighty God. We cannot do anything outside of his power for he giveth power. He giveth power to those that are fainting, to those that are weak, to those that have no might. He increases their strength. For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That is the purpose of this meeting. Say, I receive power to push through. I receive power, power, power to push through. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Say, Holy Spirit of God, Turn my weakness to strength. Holy Spirit of God, turn my weakness to strength. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit of God, turn my weakness to strength. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. That man told Jesus, he said, I believe, but help my unbelief. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Father, increase my faith and confidence in your word. Father, increase my faith and confidence in in your word, open your mouth and ask. If you ask, you will receive. For he that asketh receiveth. Say, Father, increase my faith and confidence in your word. We cannot please the Lord without faith. It is impossible. That is what the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. For without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. If you are going to see God do great things in your life, move you higher 
above every circumstances of life, you must have faith in God. Say, Father, increase my faith. Increase my confidence in your word. Increase my confidence in your word. Increase my confidence in your word. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Say, spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief. Spirit of fear, doubts, and unbelief. Get out of my life in the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear, doubts, and unbelief. Get out of my life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Spirit of fear, doubts, and unbelief. Get out of my life in the name of Jesus. Get out. Get out. Fear, get out. Unbelief, get out. Doubts, get out. Doubts, get out. Fear, get out. Unbelief, get out. Unbelief, get out. Unbelief, get out. Get out of my life in the name of Jesus. Get out of my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, tonight we are ready. I pray for everyone watching this broadcast right now that you release upon us the power from above, the power to arise and shine, the power to fulfill purpose, the power to accomplish your agenda for our lives, the power to break through every barrier and push until we get to our destination of glory, the power to overcome every obstacle, the power and grace to be more than a conqueror. Father, let it be released upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that even as this ministration is going on tonight, you will heal the sick. You will set the captives free. You will break the yoke of oppression and depression. You will destroy the powers of the enemy. You will give freedom and liberty to your people. There shall be reasons to give glory to your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. We have very serious prayers to pray tonight. And I want you to pray those prayers very well. Thank God for the prayer time that we had last night. Where we began to make declarations concerning our life, concerning our destiny. And that is what we must continue to do. Some of the declarations we made last night was, I will come out stronger and better. You need to begin to use your mouth to position your life. Did you hear that? You use your mouth to position your life. Because the power of life and death is in your mouth. Now, I am going to part two of this power to push through. You see, without the power of the Lord, we cannot do anything on our own. And like I told you the first night, the, this life is warfare. It is warfare between light and darkness, between good and evil, between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. It is warfare. And it is only those that put on the whole armor of God. When you put on the whole armor of God, the Bible says you should stand. In other words, you position yourself correctly. You resist the devil. You tell him no. In my life, no. In my family, no. In my ministry, no. In my business, no. Don't forget that. You have the power to say no to the devil. When the devil brings problem, when he brings fear, when he brings calamity, when he brings confusion, you as a child of God, when you put on the whole armor of God, you should stand and resist the devil. That is why we need power. We cannot resist the devil in our own strength. But when we put on the whole armor of God and we are equipped with the sword of the spirit, we can stand and we have the shield of faith. We can stand and resist Satan. We can resist him over our children. We can resist him over our spouses. We can resist him over our family. We can resist him over our community. We can resist him over our nation. We can resist 
system of our generation, but we must position ourselves correctly and put on the whole armor of God. Yesterday night, I advise that every one of us should pray that God should help our dreams, our visions to come true. Those of us who have discovered the purpose of God for our life, you already know what God wants you to do. You already have an idea of his agenda and direction for your destiny. Beautiful. How do you now achieve those visions? How do you achieve those dreams? How do you get to that place that God wants you to get to? That will be at the focus of our prayer tonight. How do you get to that promised land? The future you are seeing in your spirit. How do you get there? How do you get to that height that you cannot get to in your own super, I mean, natural power, wisdom, and strength? That is the focus of our prayer tonight. I want to take you to a scripture in the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. And I will read I will read verse 30. Numbers 13, verse 30. I will just pick that single verse from there. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Now, that is the statement I would like you, if you, don't, if you have not underlined that in your Bible or highlighted it in your iPad or whatever, do so now. For we are well able, we are not just able, we are well able to overcome it. That was the statement of Caleb when they went to spy the land of Canaan. And the Bible said, ten men brought evil reports. That is why, take note, majority are not always right. Ten men brought evil report. They said the land is good. The, 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 the description God gave about the land is correct. It's a land that is flowing with milk and honey. They even brought the fruits of the land. But, there was a but. They said we cannot go there. We cannot get there. It is impossible. In fact, they said they were like grasshoppers to the giants in the land. But what did Caleb say? Caleb said, let us go now. Let us go now. Do you want to push through? Do you want your dreams to become fulfilled? Do you want to get to the place of your glory? That is the spirit. The Caleb spirit. That is the spirit you must imbibe right now. The spirit of let us go now. When are we going? We are going now. When are we starting? We are starting now. When would we begin to work on our dreams, on our vision? When are we? When are we? Talk to me. Talk to me. When? Now. Now. Say, I am starting now. I am going now. That journey that started for Caleb, 45 years later, the Bible says Caleb possessed the land. That very land that he said he was able to conquer, he conquered that land. That very land he said he was able to overcome, he overcame that land. Those giants he said he was able to kill, he was able to kill them. He possessed his possession. Why? Because he, he took up this faith that I am not going to take no for an answer. If you are going to push through the wilderness and get to your promised land, you must take a decision to push through the following. To push through the following. I want you to help me invite your friends that are not online. Share this on your platform. Let all of us benefit together as we pray tonight. Because we are going to pray over these seven areas. Very important. If our dreams will come true. If our visions will be realized. If we will soar and we will, we will rise higher than the storm. We will be able to glide in the midst of confusion. Like the eagle. If we are going to do that, we must do this following. Number one, we must push through defeat. We must push through defeat. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. That you failed does not mean you are a failure. I said it last night. The fact is that you failed. But the truth is that you are not a failure. We must be able to differentiate between truth and fact. So, if you are going to overcome and soar like the eagle, 
you must push through defeat when they come. That's number one. You must push through defeat when they come. Let me take you quickly to Proverbs. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. And I will read verse number 16. Proverbs 24, verse 16. Hear what the word of God says. The word of God says, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. In other words, if a righteous man, a child of God, somebody that believes in the name of Jesus, falls, is that the end? No. Defeat is not the end. Failure is not final. It's not final. You can rise and you will rise. Say, I will rise again. Come on, somebody say, I will rise again. You remember the scripture we read last night, Micah chapter 7, verse 8. He says, my enemy don't rejoice when I fall. Because what? I am going to rise again. We must be ready to push through defeat. We might have suffered defeat in different areas of our life. Maybe in our business, maybe in our spiritual life, maybe in, in whatever area of our life, we should push through defeat. I remember when I was in primary school, I read primary three, three different years. Three different years. The first year, I, 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 I was like, how do I put it now? That, that first year, that first time I read, they, it's like they just promoted everybody. Whether you fast, whether you fail, you go on. So I was supposed to go to primary four, but my parents were transferred to another city. So I went with them. When, I, when we got to that city, the first term passed. I couldn't get a school. Now, when I got a school in the second term, the, the school insisted that I should read primary three again. So I joined them in the second term, in primary three and you see that second term i took 30 second um i took 30th position 30th out of 32 i got 30th out of 32 position by the third term i got 32 position i failed but they promoted everybody. They asked everybody to go to the next class. But when I got home and I presented my result to my parents, oh, let me tell you why that happened. Why that happened was that where I was coming from was like more of a local school. We don't do too much of English, you know. It was just a joint thing. So when I got to that new school, I did not understand English. And my teacher then... Mrs. Awa, she didn't understand Yoruba language, which I was used to. So, I was like lost in that class. So, I failed woefully, but I was promoted. I was asked to go to the next class. But my mom insisted. My mom said, no, this is not a good result. Because they wrote in that result is that uh, promoted on trial. And she said, what do you mean by promoted on trial? And I can't forget. She said, if you want to fail, fail. If you want to pass, pass. This on trial business, I don't understand. There was argument between her and my dad because my dad said, leave the boy, let him go, he will catch up, everybody in this class is going. My mom said, no, he has to repeat that class. I was the only one that repeated that class that year. So I read primary three for the third time, for the third time, for the third time. And do you know what happened? When I repeated for the third time, the first time of that third year, you know, I told you that my last result was 32nd. The first time of that, the first time of that third year, I took third position. Third position. I threw, threw away the two behind the 32 and took third position. My, 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 I was angry that I have to pass. And that changed my educational life completely. By the second term, I took second position in that class by the second term i took second position i threw away the three i removed i brought back the second i threw away the other time so i took second position do you can you guess what i took in the third term of that year can you guess can you guess i wish i can give you a reward for that you know what i took fourth position fourth position 
when I took my result home, and my parents said, you took third position first term, you took second position second term. We were expecting you to take first position this time. I said, I took fourth position because I was going to primary four. Now, what am I saying? It was failure for me, but that failure reshaped my educational life. I was angry in my spirit because I was the only one left behind by the other student. The other students were promoted and I remained in that class. So I, I, I just made up my mind, I have no choice than to pass. And that changed my educational knowledge. So what I'm saying is, don't accept defeat. Don't accept defeat. If you are going to push through, you must push through defeat. Defeats will come. There are times you will do things and you will not succeed. There are times you will plan things and they will not work out the way you planned it. But that does not mean that you are a failure. You just have to push through defeat. Proverbs 24 verse 16. When a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. How many times have you fallen? Please rise again. Learn from the mistakes of the past and move forward. Don't allow the past to make you become a past tense. Don't let your future get lost in your past. Is somebody hearing me? God is talking to you now. I mean you, you, you. Don't let your past make your future a past tense. It's time for you to rise and say, oh, I'm going to start again. Look at the places where you have made mistakes and you are falling. Learn from those mistakes. Gather new information. Get knowledge. Pray through and push through. Am I talking to somebody? Pray through and push through. So if you failed before, does not mean that you are a failure. You have to push through defeat. Number two, you have to push through discouragement. You have to push through discouragement. One of the things that makes many people not pursue their dreams and life agenda is that because of the experiences they have, they become discouraged. So, for example, some people become discouraged because they failed. Some people become discouraged because they were disappointed by somebody. Some people become discouraged because things are not working for them. Some people get discouraged because, because they invested and the investment was lost. And they say, no, there's no point in trying. But I want to talk to somebody today. Push through discouragement. Push through discouragement. In the book of Job chapter 14, Job chapter 14, I may not be able to read all the scripture, but let me read these first ones so that we can really receive the word of God and use them to pray. Job chapter 14 verse 7. The Bible says, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and the tender branch thereof will not cease. Hallelujah. You are bouncing back. That is a prophetic word for somebody. You are bouncing back. You, you, do, you are the one I'm praying for. You are bouncing back. You are bouncing back. Everything you have lost, you will recover in the mighty name of Jesus. There is hope. There is hope. Even if it seems all roads are closed against you, practically against you, there is hope. There will be a way out. There will be a way out. Somebody talk to yourself, say, there is going to be a way out for me. There will be a way out. I, I may not know how, but there will be a way out. So many examples, so many examples, so many examples coming to mind. There will be a way out. There will be a way out. There will be a way out. Don't be discouraged. Do you remember when Peter was in prison in Acts chapter 12? He was the only Christian that slept in Jerusalem that night. He was the only Christian. All the others were praying for him. They were interceding for him. But do you know what? Peter did not even pray. So there are times that you become so discouraged that you will not, to pray will become a problem. To pray will become difficult. He slept. He said, well, if they kill James and they come for me, no problem. But God made a way. I am prophesying to somebody, God is going to make a way. There is hope. Tell yourself, there is hope for me. Come on, tell yourself, there is hope for me. I don't know what the doctors have told you, but tell yourself, there is hope for me. I don't know what the financial experts have told you, but tell yourself, there is hope for me. I don't know what your situation is telling you. Tell yourself, there is hope for me. I don't know what your wife, your husband, your children, your, your parents, your friends are telling you, but tell yourself, there is hope for me. The Bible says, there is hope for a tree that is cut down. Because you are still alive, you are still rooted in Christ. Because your 
your root is still in Christ, water will come. You will sprout again. Come on, I'm praying, I'm praying for somebody. You are sprouting again. Your business is coming alive again. Opportunities will come your way again. God is going to do something new again. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You must be able to push through discouragement. You remember in 1 Samuel chapter 30, when David and his men lost everything and they cried from morning to night. Finally, the Bible said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in wealth, in what? In the Lord. You may not have money to encourage yourself with. You may not have friends that can encourage you. You may not have anybody around you right now that can encourage you. But encourage yourself in the Lord. Because in the Lord there is victory. In the Lord there is deliverance. In the Lord there are miracle signs and wonders. So push through, number one, defeat. Number two, push through discouragement. Number three, push through diseases. Disease. We live at a time that globally, the world is in trouble. The world is sick. There are sicknesses everywhere. Not only COVID. Not only COVID. There are all kinds of sicknesses and diseases everywhere. But you've got to make up your mind that I will be healthy. I will, I will not die in this sickness. I will not die in this disease. If there's anybody that is sick that you know, share this video with them. Let's pray together. They will come out of that sickness. They will come out of that disease in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you remember the story of Ezekiah? When Isaiah went to give him the word of the Lord, it was not the word of Satan. It was the word of the Lord. The Lord told him, prepare your house because you will die. But the man said, this disease will not kill me. God, check my record. Check your, 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 your promises concerning consistency. Did your word not say that no good thing shall be withheld from those that walk uprightly? I have walked before you. This disease must not kill me. Do you know what God did with that disease? God uprooted the disease from his life and added 15 years to his life. That's why you need to know the word of God and hold on to the word of God. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 verse 5. The Bible tells us by his stripes we are healed come on somebody say amen declare say by his stripes i am healed by his stripes i am healed by his stripes i am healed come on somebody let's do this ministry fast let's do it fast are you sick right now begin to declare by the stripes of jesus i am healed say my body receive healing my blood receive healing my brain receive healing my bone receive healing from my head to my toe i receive healing i receive healing i receive healing i receive healing i send out disease out of my life i send out disease out of my life you know why i chose the word disease the word disease means this is if you if you put a line between d i s and the rest word you will see that the last word is ease. Anything that makes you uneasy is a disease. Anything that makes you uneasy is a disease. So financially, one can be sick. You can be diseased. You can have disease, financial disease, that your pocket is sick, your bank account is sick. I want you to say, by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. My life is healed. My children are healed. My spouse is healed. My business is healed. My ministry is healed. Come on, somebody, let's pray that prayer quickly. Let's pray that prayer quickly. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. My destiny is healed. My body is healed. My spirit is healed. My soul is healed. In the name of Jesus, we release the healing virtue of God right now. Let the healing power of God flow right now. Let the healing power of God flow right now. Let the healing power of God flow right now. Whatever, wherever this disease is, let the yoke be destroyed right now. In the name of Jesus, declare, declare. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. Come on, somebody declare. Come on, somebody declare. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. It is so. Number four, you must push through demonic attacks. You must push through demonic attacks. You must push through demonic attacks. Listen to me, brethren. We must take authority over demonic oppressions in our life if we are going to fulfill our destiny. Let me take you to the words of Jesus in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And I'm going to read verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. Somebody say power. To tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give unto you power. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. You see, these forces that want to stop us from getting to where God wants us to be, we must receive power and march over them. We must step over them. That was what Caleb told them. He told them in that book of uh, Numbers chapter 13. He said, let us go now. In fact, the Bible tells us in verse 14, chapter 14, that Joshua said, these giants, they are bread for us. Let's go and eat them up. Let's go and eat them up. They are bread for us. Listen, you must receive power to trample upon every satanic forces that doesn't want you to get to where God wants you to be. It is not right for a child of God to be saying that it is wishes and wizard that will not allow uh, one to get to where God wants you to be or you want to pack out of your house because witches and wizards are operating there. Where will you go that there is no satanic power? You are the one to take authority over the powers of the enemy. Have you forgotten the faith of our fathers? Go and read the stories, the testimonies of those rugged prophets. Many of them did not have uh, secular uh, Western education, but they were anointed. When they say there is a forest that the, the, the entire community knows that it's a demonic forest, that's where they go to. They go to the territory of the devil and drive him out there. Many of them go to mountains where terrible spirits were, were, were abiding or residing. And they got there and sent out the spirit. But today you will see a child of God who will say, witches are around my house. I'm going to pack out of this house and pack to somewhere else. What do you have the power for? What do you have the anointing for? You have to take authority over the forces of the enemy and send them packing. That is when you are a true child of your father. Is somebody hearing me? You must push through demonic attacks. The powers and limits that have been made in your family, that nobody will go beyond a particular barrier. It is your responsibility to break that barrier with the power in the name of Jesus. The good things that they say nobody will ever do in your family and your generation, you will be the first person to do those things because you are going to break those barriers. You are going to stand and say, my case is different. My case is different. My case is different. You are the one that are, you are going to say, no, if nobody is succeeding in this family, I will be the first one to succeed. If no one is going far in this family, I will be the first one to go far. If no, you are the one to take responsibility and break through demonic barriers, break through demonic attack, break through generational causes. Those good things they say nobody is doing in your City, in your village, claim and say, I will be the first person to do them. And you will see the power of God walk through you. Number five, we must break through death. Death is terrible. Death, what I mean by death is D-E-B-T-S. Death, basically. To hold is terrible. You know, when you are struggling financially and you have to borrow, you, the borrower is a servant to the lender. And sometimes it becomes difficult to pay mortgage, it becomes difficult to pay bills, it becomes difficult to meet up with financial obligations. So we need to pray and break through debts. The Lord is going to help us to break through debts in the name of Jesus. Of course, you must know that we must manage our finances well. We must not live beyond our means. We must not buy things that are not important and necessary that are not of priority because if you are struggling financially you need to check 
What are the sources of your income? Then what are your expenses? Are you living above what you are getting? You need to make sure that you check all those things. They are important. We don't spiritualize that. You need to know if you are if you are living above your your income, you find a way to cut down. There is nothing wrong. You are no there's nobody to impress anywhere. You don't you don't because even people that we think we want to impress with our car, with our house, with our clothes, they don't even have time to look at us because they have their own problem. So you don't bother to impress anybody. Don't buy things to impress people. Don't spend money on things that are not of value. That is very, very important. Check your income. If you need to reduce your standard of living at this time, that is wisdom. If it's going to cut down cost and it's going to help you to manage the little resources you have, you, you have a bogus house and you need to bring it down to a smaller size at this moment, that does not mean that your life has crashed. I have done that before. And I remember when I did that, somebody, one of my sons in the Lord said, ah, if, if something like this is happened to a, 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 a green tree, what will dry tree do? And I said, listen to me, this is a deliberate decision to achieve something bigger. So sometimes we need to manage our income and resources, you know, so that we will not be in trouble. But at the same time, there are times after we have done everything we know we can do, we still have financial burden. What do we do? We take it to the Lord in prayer. We ask for direction. We ask for wisdom. Like that woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, she went to the prophet and the prophet said, okay, these are the steps you have to take. Obedience is very important. These are the things you need to do. And she did those things and she came out of debt. I am prophesying over your life. If you are in debt, you are hoeing. The Lord will make ways for you. The Lord will give you wisdom. The Lord will help your understanding. He will show you the right steps to take and you will come out of that debt in the mighty name of Jesus. Number six, we have to push through debt. This debt is in different forms. There is spiritual debt. There are people that are dead spiritually. Children of God who used to be vibrant for the Lord, but now the fire is dead. The anointing is dead. The grace is dead. You are still there as a figurehead in church, but you know that the power has drained off your life. If you can say amen, I ask that the Lord breathe upon you, that the Lord breathe upon you, that the Lord breathe upon you, that the Lord breathe upon you. For he breathed into the nostril of Adam and he became a living soul. For everyone that is spiritually dead, I ask that the Lord breathe upon you in the name of Jesus. I ask that the Lord restore unto you the joy of your salvation in the name of Jesus. I ask that the Lord restore unto you his grace in the name of Jesus. I ask that the Lord restore unto you his unction in the name of Jesus. I ask that the Lord restore unto you his anointing in the name of Jesus. We have to push through death. Now, Physical death too. You can see, death is something we have to stand against. You are the one that will say, I will not die, but live to declare the glory of God. Psalm 118 verse 17. Psalm 118 verse 17. I will not die. I will not die. I will not die, but live. I will not die, but live. Number seven, so that we can pray. You must push through distractions. Distractions. There are so many things that want to distract, that want to take your attention off your focus, that want to take your attention off the things that God wants for your life. And so that is where focus is very, very important. You must not allow distraction. You must not allow things that are not important to take the major things of life from you. We need to push through. And when we are able to push through these things, we are going to soar higher. As we get to pray, we want to ask the Lord to give us victory over every dream attackers over every dream killers, over every dream obstructors. I am putting the three together so that we can have time to pray. Dream attackers, dream killers, and dream obstructors. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, Paul said, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. 
He said, but the Lord rewarded him according to his works. If you read that verse 17 of that passage, 1 Timothy chapter 4, he said, no, when he started, he said, nobody stood with him. He said, but notwithstanding, the Lord stood with him and gave him victory. Listen to me. There are dream killers that does not want God's glory to shine in our lives. And the only way we can overcome them is to stand in the place of prayer and destroy their plan. But these seven areas are the areas where we need to take decision on our own and, and put our feet on the ground and say, by the grace of God. I will not be defeated. I will be victorious. So let's take the prayers one by one very quickly. Number one, we want to push through defeat. Say, I break the yoke of failure over my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of failure over my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and pray. I break the yoke of failure over my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of failure over my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of failure over my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of failure over my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of failure over my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Say every pit dog ahead for me. Say every pit, dog ahead for me. The digger fall into them in the name of Jesus. Every pit, dog ahead for me. Let those who dug them fall into it in the name of Jesus. Let the digger fall into them. Let them fall into the pit the dog by themselves in the name of Jesus. Let them fall into the pit the dog by themselves in the name of Jesus. Let them fall into the pit that they dug by themselves in the name of Jesus. Let them fall into the pit they dug by themselves in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive strength to rise again. I receive strength to rise again. I receive strength to rise again. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive strength to rise again. I receive strength to rise again. I receive strength to rise again. Spiritually, I am rising. Financially, I am rising. Maritally, I am rising. In every area of my life, I am rising. I receive strength to rise again. In the name of Jesus, I receive strength to rise again in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's pray against discouragement. Say every spirit of weariness and discouragement. Loose your hold from my heart, from my life. Every spirit of weariness and discouragement. Loose your hold from my spirit and my life. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of discouragement and weariness, lose your hold, 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 lose your hold from my spirit, from my life. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Can somebody declare, There is hope for me? And therefore, in the name of Jesus, I will shine. Say, there is hope for me. There is hope for me. There is hope for my children. There is hope for my husband. There is hope for my wife. There is hope for my ministry. There is hope for my business. There is hope for my education. There is hope. In the name of Jesus, there is hope. I may not have friends. I may not have supporter. I may not have family. I may not have anybody. But I have Jesus. I have Jesus. And because I have Jesus, there is hope. 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 I will shine. There is hope. I will shine. Please don't, don't joke with these prayers. Pray. Pray. Say, in the name of Jesus, there is hope. In the name of Jesus, there is hope. I reject the lies of the devil. There is hope. I am not finished. No, I am not finished. I am not. I have that in my spirit. The devil has been suggesting to you. People have been telling you that you are finished. In fact, you said it with your own mouth. Hey, I am finished. 
I am finished. Ah, you are not finished. No, you are not finished. No, no, you are not finished. Tell yourself, I am not finished. God is not true with me yet. There is hope for me. Somebody say, there is hope for me. Somebody say, there is hope for me. Somebody say, there is hope for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let's pray against disease again. Every disease in my body, every disease in my family, every disease, every sickness, I command them to lose their hope and go in the name of Jesus. It can it be malaria, typhoid, fever, um, cancer, COVID-19, diabetics, hypertension, ulcer, whatever, migraine, whatever sickness. Command them to lose their hold from your life. Command every sickness to lose its hold from your life. Command every sickness, every disease to get out of your system. Command them to go now. He says, by his stripes you are healed. Command every sickness to go. Command every disease to go. Command every sickness to go. Command every disease to go. In the name of Jesus. Command every sickness to go. Command every disease to go. In the name of Jesus. Command every sickness to go. Command every disease to go. Say, by his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. As you are praying, begin to take those things you cannot do before, begin to do them. The power is hitting you there. The power is touching you there. The power is breaking the yoke there. The power is setting you free there. The power is removing the, the everything that is not of God in your life. The power is working. The power of God is working. Sicknesses and diseases are getting out of your system. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. This is very, very powerful and important. We want to stand against demonic attacks. I've told you about dream killers. I've told you about dream attackers. So many ways they come. So many ways they attack to make sure that you don't fulfill God's purpose for your life. It's time to stand and fight. It's time to stand and resist. Say, in the name of Jesus, I arrest every dream killer of my life. I arrest every dream killer of my life and I paralyze their operation in the name of Jesus. I arrest every dream killer of my life and paralyze their operation in the name of Jesus. I arrest every dream killer of my life and paralyze their operation in the name of Jesus. I arrest every dream killer of my life and paralyze their operation in the name of Jesus. I arrest every dream killer of my life and paralyze their operation in the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and pray. 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 And pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. He said, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. I want you to pray. Say, in the name of Jesus, I march over every serpent and every scorpion, fighting the purpose of God for my life. In the name of Jesus, I crush them. I destroy them. I break their heads. In the name of Jesus, I march over every power that want to keep me down. I march over. I march over every serpent. I march over every scorpion. I march over. Come on, go ahead. I march over. I march over every serpent, every scorpion, every demonic walk in the name of Jesus fighting the purpose of God for my life. I march over them in the name of Jesus. I march over them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Now I want you to pray this prayer very powerfully. Say, every power resisting the purpose of God for my life Lose your hold in my life in the name of Jesus. Say every power resisting the purpose of God for my life. Lose your hold. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let me hear you shout amen. Pray this prayer. Something will happen. Say angel of deliverance. Angel of deliverance, manifest and set me free from every yoke of the enemy in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Say, angel of deliverance, 
manifest and set me free from every chain in the name of Jesus. Something is happening. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do you understand that prayer? I, I explained it to you. It's in Acts chapter 2. Peter could not do anything, but God sent an angel, that angel of deliverance. When that angel stepped into that prison, every guard slept off. When that angel stepped into that prison, light came. When that angel stepped into that prison, all the chains of Peter was broken. When that angel stepped into that prison, the gates were opening. I want you to pray aggressively. Where is the angel of deliverance from the Lord? Step right now into my room. Step right now into my house. Step right now into my my situation. Let every chain be destroyed. Let every yoke be broken. Come on, somebody pray. God is still using the ministry of the angels, if you don't know. God still uses his angel. They are servants. God sends them on assignment to fight and work on our behalf. Come on, somebody pray. Let the angels of God manifest on my matter. Let them begin to do things. Let them begin to break chains. Let things begin to happen in the name of Jesus. Let closed doors begin to open in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray. Let the angel of deliverance step into my family. Let the angel of deliverance step into my heart. Let the angel of deliverance step into my business. Let the angel of deliverance step in. Let them go to my office right now. Let them go to my foundation right now. Let them go to my family house right now. Let them travel to the village right now. What they need to destroy, let them begin to destroy. In the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Ah, the Lord showed me somebody before the end of this week before saturday god is going to give you a letter of joy before saturday before this coming saturday god is going to give you a letter of joy god is going to give you a letter of joy i want you to cry unto the lord say by the grace of god my dreams will come true by the grace of God, my dreams will come true. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and make that declaration. Say, by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, my dreams will come true. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost, my dreams will come true. In the name of Jesus, my dreams will come true. My dreams will come true. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive strength to reach my promised land. I receive strength strength to get to my promised land. I receive strength to get to my promised land. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. I receive strength to get to my promised land in the name of Jesus. I receive strength to get to my promised land in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hold your head and say in the name of Jesus, I receive fresh ideas, fresh revelations from the Lord to advance, to move forward. I receive fresh fresh ideas. I receive fresh revelations. I receive fresh insights from the Lord. I receive clarification concerning God's instruction in the name of Jesus. As you are praying this prayer, the Holy Spirit is touching you. The Holy Spirit is working on you. The Holy Spirit is doing something in your mind. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Say, I receive fresh revelations. I receive fresh insights. I receive fresh ideas. Holy Spirit, begin to show me those things I need to do to get multiple streams of income. Those things I need to do to change my level. Those things I need to do. Those steps I need to take in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed can you shout that amen loud and clear oh can we still pray these prayers okay let's pray just one more let's pray just one more because of time this one prayer i want it to be your prayer what is the area in your life that you really need god to push you on what is that area where you need to go what is that issue that is very 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 serious at this time push it to the lord now in prayer Rebo so to maka shandaya, braze de ye maka sete ye boko shirima, di brozo do ye maka shandaya boko siri maka sete te, di brasata ya boko shiri maka sete ye ma, di brozo do maka shede ye maka shondo ye ki mama ma. Yes, Lord God of heaven and earth, answer by fire. Lord, as your children pray, answer by fire. As your children call unto you, answer by fire. As your children cry unto you, answer by fire. Lord, answer by fire. Lord, answer by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. Stretch your hands towards me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your grace for advancement upon these ones in the name of Jesus. Every attacker of your vision, every attacker of your dream, every obstructor on the way of your advancement, I command the power of the Holy Ghost to clear them off. The things you need to do, the things you need to do on your own to move forward, may the Lord make them easy for you in the name of Jesus. I declare in your life that by the power of the Almighty, before the end of this week, you will have reasons to glorify God in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I want to thank every one of you that have joined us tonight. Thank you, Pastor Ajimoko. Thank you, God's people, Brother Akia Jala, and everybody that have joined. Thank you so much. I, my wife is online. Thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. Now, please, can you do something for me? Do something for me. Tomorrow is the fourth day, and tomorrow is going to be an explosive prayer time. We have 50 prayer points to pray. No exhortation. 50 prayer points. I will just be drawing the scripture and will be hammering the prayer. 50 prayer points within 60 minutes. It's going to be hot. It's going to be explosive. I want you to please try encourage one person to join you tomorrow on this platform. Please, 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 the same time, I want you to encourage at least one person to join you on this platform. I will be very grateful if you can do that because I know God is going to do something powerful. I know God is going to do something awesome. I know God is going to do something great. He has started already. Watch it. You will hear the testimony in the name of Jesus. I want to thank God for as many that have really been giving, has been sowing. You know, from the very first day of this program, I said we will be collecting offering. That after the prayer, as the Lord bless you, whatever He puts in your heart, nothing is small, nothing is big. Um, we will collect offering. So it is offering time. Whatever the Lord has blessed you with, you can give. If you want to do that, just send me a message on the inbox. I will send. The information to you you can give in dollars you can give in naira you can give by paper you can give by zelly whatever we will give you the information when you ask for the information by the grace of god the time is 5 p.m new york time i still don't know how to get this central time if you know how to do that please let us know new york time 5 p.m nigerian time 11 uh p.m. Uh, UK time, 11 p.m. Uh, but for those of us in America, New York time, um, 5 p.m., 5 to 6 uh, you know, p.m. in America, that is the time tomorrow. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. If you have a prayer request, please send your prayer request or you have testimony, please send your testimony via inbox and the Lord will bless you, He will favor you and this new week, there will definitely be testimonies in Jesus' name. God bless you. Do have a wonderful night rest. We will have reasons to praise God over and over and over and over again. 